Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to prevent duplicate entries into a list which is oftentimes updated. So if you update it once a week, twice a week, uh, every single day, you want to make sure that you are never entering a duplicate value into this list. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. It's actually pretty simple to do if you already know how to prevent duplicates being entered into a simple list. So if you'd like to get the workbook you see here, go to teachexcel.com and you can download it there. Now what I've got here is a little table for part numbers and cost. I'm going to enter the part numbers here and the cost for every part number over here. Now it could be anything that you need to be unique, employee ID numbers or really any type of unique identification system. But the main thing is our list may only be from cells or rows 2 to 5 or 2 to 6 today, but maybe tomorrow we add an entry into 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. We can't necessarily apply data validation so easily to include the next cell every time. But what we can do is apply data validation to all of the cells. So if you understand what that means from now, you don't have to watch anymore. But um, now I'm going to show you the formulas that we need to do this. The main thing is we need a custom formula to actually check if there's a duplicate being entered. It's going to be a count if function with a little bit extra added. Now the way we're going to do this is to select all of these cells go to data validation. Here's the shortcut that's going to work in all versions, alt dl or go to the data tab, data tools and select data validation. From this window we're going to go to the custom section under allow and enter a formula in this bar right here. Now I'm going over this a little bit quick but that's because we're going to do it slower in a second after we create the formula. The main problem is you can't enter the formula here and have Excel use all of its uh, error checking. So it's not going to tell you if you spelled it incorrectly or if you did something wrong. You need to enter it actually into one of these cells to get all of that error checking. So I like to do it there first and then paste it into here. So let's close this and create the custom formula. Okay, it's pretty easy. It is equals count if open parentheses now the count if, that's what's going to allow us to count how many occurrences there are of each part number in this list. There are two arguments, a range argument and a criteria argument. The range is simply the table, so the, the place where we're going to be entering all of the part numbers. The criteria is simply the very first cell in the list. Now for our range, I'm going to go ahead and select the first cell in the table, hit control, shift, down, so control shift and then the down arrow then comma now let's go all the way back up to the top and we can see the range is cell A2 to A1,048,500 <clears throat> so lots of cells in Excel 2007 now the criteria simply the first cell in the range one thing I forgot to do is after you enter this range right here simply hit F4. It's going to put dollar signs in front of this and make sure that this table does not change. That This is the range and it will not move. The criteria A2 do not put dollar signs in front of that because we want it to change for every cell in this range. So close the parentheses. Now we have a function that says it's going to count how many times whatever is in cell A2 occurs in cells A2 to A1,048,576. But it's not a logical function yet. We need it to return true or false. What we're going to do here is less than or equals to 1. So we only want it to return true if count if returns 1 or less than 1. Now this is the formula we need to prevent duplicates being entered. So what I'm going to do is to select it, hit Control X to cut it out of there, and escape. The next thing we need to do is to apply data validation. And since we're going to always be updating this list, we want to apply it to the entire column. Now in Excel 07 you could simply select column A, but I don't really want to include row 1. Depending on how your data is set up, you can just select the entire column or not. It's really up to you. Um, so I'm going to hit Control Shift Down once again then alt dl to go to data validation from here under allow go to custom in the formula box let's paste that formula in that we just made 
hit OK. Now if we go to any one of these cells, let's go to the first cell, Alt-D-L, we can see the formula is exactly what we entered. The range is the same and criteria is A2. Now if we go down here to a different cell, row 5, go back to data validation, the range is the same, the criteria is now cell A5. So that's why you don't put dollar signs around the criteria. Now let's go ahead and test this. So part number 1, 2, 3. 3, 2, 1. Now let's go way down here. Our list is growing. Let's add 1, 2, 3 here. Oh, we have an error because this is a duplicate part number. So that's not really the nicest error message, by the way. If you like to add a custom error message right here or error box so you can tell the user exactly what they did wrong, you can check out the Data Validation 8 tutorial. It'll tell you how to do that. But um, anyway, so now we cannot enter duplicates into this entire list, basically the entirety of column A, except for cell A1. And that's really the best way to do it if you're going to be continually updating the list. Because even though you know it doesn't look like data validation is applied all the way down, if we go to the very last cell, we can see that the criteria is updated to the very last cell. So if you're going to be continually updating the list, you want to make sure data validation applies for the entire list. So no matter what, you can't enter duplicates. In my opinion, that's really the best and the easiest way to achieve this. Now, if you'd like to get this workbook, go to teachexcel.com. You can download it there. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for this tutorial.